Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are, whenever you're watching this. This is Floating in Dreams, and today's video is going to be a top 10 ranking of my favorite high-end foundations. Welcome to everybody watching today's video. Thank you so very much for being here. I thought it could be fun to do a top 10 ranking of my favorite high-end foundations. I'm definitely sort of playing around with the idea of doing this with other categories in my makeup collection. So let me know in a comment down below if that's something you'd like me to continue to do. And top of that list to do another one of these videos is of course drugstore foundations as well. But I wanted to make sure I gave the drugstore its own moment to shine. So that's why today we are limiting ourselves to the top 10 favorite foundations that I have in my collection at a higher price point. In case you're unfamiliar with my channel, hi, my name is Maika. I live in the Netherlands and I love coming on here to chat about eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice reviews and getting the use out of my makeup. And when it comes to foundation, I'm definitely more of a like practical using, like trying to use it up as well. I use up two to three foundations every single year. Definitely some of the older things that I have in my collection, but I also love trying out new things. So I always have other things to talk about and I definitely have preferences when it comes to foundations and I'm pretty sure that if you have fair skin like me if you're a fellow snow angel hi welcome to the club and uh, then you'll know how difficult it can be to find your shade match in any foundation which is why I tend to prefer more high-end foundations over drugstore ones because very often at the drugstore I just struggle finding my shade I sometimes even struggle finding my shade in more high-end foundations which is probably going to be something that I will comment on as we're going through this ranking. Another thing you should know about me and my foundation preferences is that I have dry, dehydrated, sensitive skin that definitely factors into what kind of foundations I like. I like things to be hydrating, light coverage, dewy, and that definitely goes into all of the foundations that I truly love and adore, so let's get to them. Number 10 in this ranking is the one that's currently in my shop, my stash. What am I talking about? This is the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Foundation in the shade Fair Beige. This is currently the foundation I'm trying to use up this year, and I've used up about two thirds of this. I have about a third of this left, and it's a really nice, dewy, lightweight foundation, and I always get lots of compliments when I'm wearing this. There are two reasons why I'm trying to use it up. A, it's old. It's so old that you can no longer buy this. It was discontinued. Um, but I really appreciate the texture of this and how long it wears. It's a very thin, watery kind of texture, and it has a little like dropper style to get the product out, which I do like, okay, if it works well enough. In this, it works quite well. And it also has a SPF of 15, which I think is good. Not enough, of course, to protect your skin from any sort of UV rays, but any kind of bit helps, I feel. Um, when it comes to this Tarte foundation, I have always very much appreciated it. I'm really glad I got to try it, but. I just want to use it up before it expires and that's the reason why I put this in the number 10 spot of this ranking because it is one of my favorite foundations but you can no longer buy it so I can't possibly rank this any higher. Number 9 on the list is the Urban Decay Hydromaniac foundation and this foundation is really good if you have dry skin but the reason why I'm putting this in the number 9 spot is for two reasons. This is a kind of foundation that I can only use in the dead of winter. This has actual oils in it, and even though I have dry, dehydrated skin, that mainly goes so for my cheeks, but my T-zone does get a little bit oily, and I always find that the warmer the weather we get, the oilier my skin gets, and then something like this would just break up too much, so for my very dry skin in the winter time, this is lovely. I even love pairing it with the Glossier Future Dew, which is another oil-based product. So if you want, if you have super dry skin, this may be really nice. The second reason why I'm not ranking this any higher is the shade range. I believe this only comes in 10 shades. I have mine in 10 Ultra Fair, and it does work for me, but that means that a lot of people are still left out. And another thing I don't love in this is that there are no undertones. So everything in this line is very yellow, and on my neutral skin, I can still get away with it, but especially when I get very pale, which is usually what I am in the winter time, I need things to either be a little bit more like peachy pink cleaning, because that works a lot better for me than this very warm yellow tone. You can't really see it in the viewfinder here, but um, yeah, I think that this is a little bit too yellow to be, for it to be a perfect shade match for me. 
Number eight is an oldie but a goodie, and it's the MAC Waterweight uh, SPF 30 foundation, and this is in NC15. Um, I went with the water weight over the face and body, which is getting quite a lot of hype again. I want to go back to that because apparently they've ex extended the shade range and that's a foundation that I've used up in the past. So maybe I will like it even better than I do this, but I did repurchase this foundation for MAC because I loved it so much. I used one of these up in the past, which is why it had to go into the top 10. The reason why this goes into the um, number eight spot here is because it does have that dropper style and while I like that if I'm looking at everything that's in like the the more high end the higher part of this ranking it's all squeezy tubes and pumps I also really like very practical stuff <laughs> when it comes to packaging and while this is practical enough um, I mean the dropper in this works really well and with this kind of very watery foundation it's very liquidy I'm sure if you can hear that I shake it up like it's very liquidy I really like this it's got a good shade range as well but now that Mac has been doing more shades in the face and body and the, a lot of people are raving about it again like as an OG skin tint a lot of people are going back to it and I love skin tints too so maybe I should just go back to the face and body but yeah for now the water wave foundation is definitely one that deserves a spot in my top 10 number seven the YSL all hours foundation this is in shade BR20. YSL All Hours is my pick for a long wear foundation. I don't really need my foundation to be like foolproof and like stick down for the entire day. I like it if it has a little bit of longevity. I mean, the Urban Decay one definitely breaks up a lot quicker than this does. But this is a little too much for what I like on a day-to-day -day basis, which is why a lot of the things that I've got going on in my top five are very dewy, very lightweight, and this is a little bit more heavy duty, but if you have my kind of skin, so you have dry dehydrated skin, and you struggle finding something that has higher coverage, because that's what you are looking for, then I definitely recommend looking into the All Hours. If you want a budget version of this, it does exist. The L'Oreal Fresh Wear Foundation is very similar to this indeed. Um, I did a side-by-side -side video for that too, but yeah, this is a really, really lovely lovely foundation and BR20 is my spot on shade. And this had to go somewhere and the reason why I didn't rank it higher is because it is quite new to me, but this is one that I see I can see potentially climbing up and replacing the other foundation from this brand that I have in this ranking today. But for now, my Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation has to go into this uh, number six spot. This is in the shade Three cool and that's another reason why this is not ranking any higher I struggled finding my shade in, shade in this for sure because the brand does do undertones but once you get to the very light end of the spectrum there are no undertones anymore and the neutral shades in this line were very very yellow which is why I went with a shade that is actually a little bit too deep for me but I felt because the undertone was better and it shears out pretty okay and then when I do the rest of my makeup it really doesn't look too weird on me so perhaps not the best for me in like the dead of winter when I'm at my playlist but this is definitely something that I can wear more so like the rest of the year and it does have a really really good texture it's perhaps a little bit more coverage than I go for most of the time but it's a good everyday foundation for sure and I am looking forward to going back to this and put it in another one of my shop my stashes perhaps so in the fall time. Number five is the Giorgio Armani Neo Nude True to Skin Natural Glow Foundation. This is in the shade 1.5 and the reason why this doesn't get to go any higher in this ranking isn't because it isn't a good product. I'm itching to put this back into my shop my stash but there were some other foundations I wanted to go back to, try out, all that. So next month, I think I will be rolling this into a Shop My Stash. It's a lovely, lovely, very dewy, lightweight, barely there kind of foundation, but I can't rank a foundation any higher if it sells shades that I cannot regularly get my hands on. I had to order this from the UK because the Giorgio Armani Neo Nude doesn't go beyond shade, was it two or three? In my country so they sell more shades like there are shades available but they are not for sale where I live and then I'm like what's going on there so I had to get this from the UK I think I got it through feel unique or look fantastic one of those websites um, and then I did 
I was able to find the shade 1.5 because the other shades were just far too yellow toned, far too dark for my skin tone. And I was able to find online that there were three additional lighter shades that they just don't sell. And then I'm like, just sell the product so I can get my hands on it, please. Like then you do a more inclusive shade range and then you don't sell it. Like what, what's up with that? Number four, and this is a, I went through one of these, so I've used it up in the past. So this is a repurchase, which is why it gets to go so high up. And this is one of the reasons why the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin is knocked down a few notches, because I still love my IT Cosmetic CC Cream. And I feel that this is like the OG version of that Charlotte Tilbury foundation. Shade wise, just, this works better for me as well. This is in the shade Fair. This has also extended shade ranges now, right now. So there are a couple of other shades but I have always liked the shade fair on me. It works really well. This is a great foundation again for me in the winter time because of how rich this texture is. It is a medium coverage, but I find that this shears out a lot better than a Charlotte Tilbury is. So it gives me the kind of coverage that I want. Looks great on the skin. And this is such a staple go-to that I knew it had to go into the top five for sure. Um, this is a new tube that I haven't opened yet for this video. I will be opening it because I wanted to show you how it swatches, but yeah, the It Cosmetic CC Cream is such a good staple. And this is one that if I run out of this one or it expires, I will just repurchase it again. Now, the reason why the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin isn't ranked any higher is because my number three foundation on the list is another Charlotte Tilbury one. And this is her Light Wonder Youth Boosting per Perfect Skin Foundation with SPF 15. And this is in the shade Too Fair. A, the shade of this is better. Two, this is a squeezy tube, plastic, plastic container, which is really, really great for travel and for storing, and it's just great. And the texture of this. I mean, this has everything I want in a foundation. Like, these top three foundations tick all the boxes for me. Good shade, good texture, easy to wear, easy blendability, looks like skin. And I accidentally kept this on to a sweaty workout class last fall when I was testing this out and it stayed put, even though I had worn it after a full day of work as well. And it still looked great. It didn't accentuate any texture, any dryness. It's not too cakey looking. This remains looking like skin. And I love it. And for my number one spot, I was very much umming and ahhing between this one and the one I actually put in the number one spot. But number two, Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. As I mentioned with the Light Wonder from Charlotte Tilbury, I rate all three of these foundations really, really highly. Like I put, all, I can put all three of these in the number one spot and I would be happy, but I had to make a ranking. So Luminous Silk in shade three, again, perfect shade match great consistency, great like wearability. This looks so pretty on the skin. I now understand why so many have been hyping up this foundation for years. I was a bit late to the party, a bit late to the game, but I kind of bought this because they do sell all of the shades of this one in my country. Yay. So just for the Neo nude for some reason, it's not across the entire brand. The only reason why this isn't like my top favorite foundation is because it does have the pump and like this glass bottle that doesn't make it perfect for like throwing it into a makeup bag. So I wish this would come in a squeezy tube. Squeezy tube foundations is where it's at for me, which is why I felt the Dior backstage foundation had to go into the top spot. A, it's a long-standing favorite. I have had this foundation for much longer than I do the Charlotte Tilbury and the Giorgio Armani. Those are quite new to me. I've bought those in like the past year. Whereas this, I've had this for like three or four years and I go back to it all the time. I love chucking this into a makeup bag for travel. The shade of this, which is 0N, is really, really spot on perfect. It has the wearability I like. It's still makeup, like with the... With the Light Wonder, I feel it looks more like skin than this does, but I don't mind it if you can see that I'm wearing makeup. For some reason, I really, really don't care. Um, but this is just a really good foundation. You can apply this with fingers, a sponge, a brush. Like this is such a versatile product. It has great longevity. I think it will also go with a lot of skin types as well. So if you don't have dry skin 
and you don't want something that's super dewy, then this is, this is just a perfect everyday foundation that you can just wear and it will be very inoffensive. And unlike, hold on, am I right here? Yes. Another reason why this gets to be in the top spot is because this comes with a lot more product. So the Armani has 30 mils, the Light Wonder has 40 mils, but the Dior, the Dior one comes with 50 mils of product, which is almost double what you get in a standard foundation because standard foundations have 30 milliliters of product. So this is a lot of bang for your buck, even though it's a little bit more expensive. It's not as expensive as the Giorgio Armani or the Charlotte Tilbury if you compare it to how much product you actually get. And because it has a little bit more coverage, you really only have a, you need to use a little bit of this and you can still cover your entire face, but it's also buildable to a more medium coverage if you so wish to, to do that. So for me, the Dior just, it takes all the boxes, like all of them, where I can still take a few points off for the Charlotte Tilbury and the Giorgio Armani with the Dior, it's like chef's kiss perfection for sure. So that's it, that's my top 10 ranking of my favorite high-end foundations. Let me know in a comment down below what your favorite foundation is and I hope it was helpful that there were some recommendations here for you to know what you might wanna look into if you have fair skin or if you have dry skin like I do. I hope it was helpful in that way. And for now, I would like to thank you very much for being here. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make several videos a week and I hope you would like to stay tuned for more. I hope to see you in my next video, everybody. Take care, bye-bye.